Yeah, yeah. Welcome back. It's Monday. Happy Monday. How you doing? Uh, I'm actually filming this video that you're watching right now on Super Bowl Sunday. So it's like a week prior. And every Monday, we're going to do a rookie mock draft with a featured guest. And that will be the case going forward. However, I am filming this on Super Bowl Sunday because I'm out of, out of office the entire next week. So I'm not going to be able to do a featured guest. But I still wanted to rip off some hopefully high quality content for you. So what we're going to do is I found a mock draft online, and again, this early in the process, it's very hard to find full mock drafts that go through more than just the first 31, because Miami's pick is forfeited, 31 picks in the first round. So we wanted to get extended one. I'm going to go through it and just kind of like talk through the skill players, fantasy relevant for rookie dynasty drafts, and get my thought process out for uh, landing spots and draft capital and things like that. So it's not officially a rookie mock draft, but you'll get a lot of the same analysis throughout it. And this mock draft is brought to you by drafttech.com, D-R-A-F-T-T-E-K.com. Uh, the first link down below will be the mock draft that we're using. So you can follow along if you want to while we're doing this. All right, so here is the website, and it looks it looks like it's giving my computer aids off the rip. How are you going to run a website with this many fucking ads? Uh, this is These are the only websites you can find nowadays at, at this point in the year that actually have uh, full seven round mock drafts and, and and it makes sense it makes sense once you get on here the first round is a little bit confusing on the website not confusing but there's full write-ups for every player in the first round and once you get to like rounds two and three it's much easier it's just a list of the players like this so what i actually did out of the kindness of my terrible heart we're going to jump bike here to full screen for this one is i created this cute little excel chart that has all the fantasy relevant first round picks of that mock draft so i don't have to make your eyes bleed for now but we will get to that once we get to rounds two three and four but here are all the skill players that were taken in round one right now beautifully crisply laid out for you quarterbacks few wide receivers one running back one tight end so obviously there are some trades in place here you see bryce young goes off the board number one overall to Indianapolis, which means they jumped Houston. So they took Bryce Young at one. C.J. Stroud goes two to Houston. Will Levis goes seven overall to Las Vegas. Anthony Richardson goes top ten to Carolina. This makes shit really, really difficult if you are in a super flex rookie draft because you've got four quarterbacks that go top ten, and it's something that I've preached, you know, for the last few years. It's like we're terrible at evaluating quarterback talent. So I would listen to draft capital first. And then I would just go and get your guy because the last thing you want is to look back and be like, I knew that motherfucker was him and I didn't take him because some asshole on YouTube told me not to. So with all four of these guys getting top 10 capital, the draft capital, it's not like Richardson went 22nd overall, Will Levis dropped to 16th as opposed to like Bryce Young going one overall. We've seen this play out before with like Mahomes and Josh Allen and where they went. They were not the first quarterbacks picked in their class. They were not a number one, number two, number three pick. And you see how that shit worked out. Now on the, on the flip side, there are obviously good quarterbacks that go one and two overall, but it's not always draft capital. So in this case, you should go get your guy. If this is how things played out, I'm likely taking Bryce Young as the first quarterback off the board. I think it's clear that Carolina is investing into Anthony Richardson, regardless of how you feel about him as a talent. The rushing upside is crazy. If he hits, he hits way higher than probably any of the guys in this class. So Richardson will probably be my two. Stroud be my three. Will Levis would be my four. Interesting landing spot. I do low-key like the Las Vegas Raiders landing spot, though, obviously being paired with uh, Devontae Adams there off the rip. But that would be a crazy start. Four quarterbacks in the top 10, the first four skill players off the board. Bijan Robinson, a top 15 pick here, goes to Green Bay. I have not seen him mock to Green Bay yet. Now, if you've been following along with our Friday videos, we've been talking about free agents. Two weeks ago, we did a full video about the upcoming free agent class, like the guys who are going to be looking for new contracts this upcoming March. And then three days ago, Friday's video was dudes who are on their contract year who will be free agents after the 2023 season. Now, the Packers fit into that, into this situation here with Bijan going 15 there because, one, Aaron Jones is not a free agent until I think after like 2025 maybe or 2024 or whatever. He's got a few years left on his contract still, but the Packers can save $11 million getting rid of him this year or $11 million getting rid of him next year. So maybe he's a trade candidate. I doubt you just cut a player of that high level of a talent, but we could see him being moved. 
A.J. Dillon is a free agent after this upcoming year. So 2023 plays out, then he's a free agent because that entire class of running backs is free agents afterwards. So it likely wherever, if this is uh, the scenario that plays out, Bijan Robinson will not hit his ceiling in year one because he's either splitting carries with Dillon or Aaron Jones. After that, I mean, the ceiling is, you know, phenomenally high. So I think regardless, I'm just not going to overthink it. Bijan Robinson is the next coming, is the next guy out here that's, you know, the Saquon, the JT level, who's going to be by next year, the 101 or 102 in Dynasty Startup uh, Draft. So I am not going to overthink it. And Bijan, regardless of the situation he's going into, will be my 101 overall. And then we get into the quarterbacks. And then there's a group of wide receivers. So Jordan Addison, I made a video last week saying he's my wide receiver one in the class, but he goes to Houston. Paired up with C.J. Stroud, so you got like the QB and the wide receiver one of the future. I still think they're going to take some time to rebuild that team. Jackson Smith and Jigba is my two, and he goes to the New York Giants, where I like that landing spot like 400 times better. But he goes down at pick 25, and honestly, I'm not really worried about like draft capital as it pertains to first round wide receivers, because like you know Justin Jefferson versus the other guys in that class. Like we've seen a, a ton of like really really good wide receivers hit in that 20 to 32 range. I I, I don't necessarily think unless you're you know, one of those like Julio Jones, AJ Green level prospects of wide receiver where you're getting taken top five. I don't think there's a massive difference here because talent wise, there is no clear wide receiver one in this class. So uh, this would be a situation where I might look at landing spots. I might look at uh, who the quarterback attached to that wide receiver is for the future. Josh Downs going to Buffalo would set my fucking brain on fire because I love Josh Downs out of UNC. He is so fun. He's smaller, but he's fast. He's quick. He's got such strong hands. Incredible slot receiver. Incredible, incredible route runner. Incredible separator. Uh, Quentin Johnson is the first wide receiver off the board, though, and he goes to Tennessee, which is my least favorite landing spot because we know Ryan Tannehill is a free agent after this upcoming year. That offense is kind of up in flux. I also used that first-round pick on Traylon Burks last year, so it's like, who is the one? I don't know. So I think wide receiver-wise, what I would do here... I think I might throw Jackson Smith and Jigba as my one in this rookie draft. Addison two, Josh Downs three, Quentin Johnson four. Quentin Johnson is an awesome, fun prospect. Uh, very tall, very lean, very agile, like super quick twitch for someone who's like 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 uh, but I don't love the landing spot, and I don't. I really don't know how his game translates to the next level in terms of like his ceiling as a player. We haven't seen many players come in and have that type. You know, I, I, I comped him to like Martavis Bryant. Maybe he's a better route runner. Maybe he's a little more like quick twitch and, and better at like getting across the middle rather than just like a playmaker like Martavis Bryant was. But he would be my four just, you know, in terms of like favorite wide receivers in this class. And I think the only way Josh Downs actually goes above any of these guys in any rookie drafts that are real would be a situation like this where he gets first round capital and goes to Buffalo where they badly need weapons outside of Stefan Diggs because they don't they don't trust Gabriel Davis anymore I don't even know who they have at this point behind Khalil Shakir fifth round pick from last year uh if they take Josh Downs in the first round he's going to be a big part of that offense immediately and I love that landing spot so that's how I would look at the first round so let's jump into like round two and just break down some of the landing spots Michael Mayer first tight end off the board goes to Tampa Bay 19th overall I'm not using like a top 8, 10, probably not even 12 rookie pick on a tight end. All right, let's jump bike into the matrix over here. Round two, Jalen Hyatt, first skill player off the board at the 39th pick to Carolina. That would kind of be cool. You pair him up with uh, Anthony Richardson, who's got a tremendously big arm similar to like Hendon Hooker out there in Tennessee that made Jalen Hyatt pop. I'm still uh, Jalen Hyatt, Bolitnikoff winner this year, best wide receiver in the country. I still question like how good he's going to be at the next level. How much of like a one trick pony is he? The deep threat. I talked about this on the mock draft with Ray, Ray G. If you missed that, that was like two Mondays ago or last Monday. Really, really good episode. Jalen Hyatt is a dude who popped off. He had that everyone remembers like the huge game from Alabama where the guy had like fucking five touchdowns or something. That accounted for a lot of his statistics this year, of course. He put up big numbers regardless of that game, but I'm looking at the games like his game logs are typically pretty average. They're like 50 to 60, 70 yards. Five big games. The one was against Alabama. Can't take that away from him. That's, you know, a team that you dominate that team. You are probably a dominant player. Two of those games, two of the five big time games he had were against absolute shit like teams that shouldn't even be on a college football schedule. The other two were against like Kentucky or whatever, two SEC schools with real defenses. But if you look at the the games, like, you know, if he had 140 receiving yards, like 90 of them came on like a broken play. So I, I feel like a lot of his shit is inflated based off a few big plays that he had. Again, I don't want to take that away from him, but I do question whether or not he can really like translate all that to the next level if defenses are throwing a safety over the top of him. Kayshawn Boutte 
The pick right after him goes to New Orleans. So we go LSU to to NOLA. Real quick ride right there for him. Uh, Keishon Boutte is a guy that I, I'm kind of in on. I'm kind of in on as like the hype continues to like die around, uh, die around him. He was like a big time guy coming in freshman year, uh, played really, really well as a freshman. Everybody was like going crazy about him. The next great LSU wide receiver. I like this pick for new Orleans a lot. I like it him opposite of Chris Olave for the future. So he would be someone I'd be really interested in getting in the back end of the first round, early second round kind of feels a little bit like this year's, um, like this year's George Pickens, like discount because there's been a lot of like injury up in flux like what's going on he had the, the year before he came out this previous year he had a bad year but it was like shitty quarterback play beef with the with the head coach of Kelly uh just you know just not a good passing offense and it made him suffer so I am I'm, I'm, I'm in on this kid as like a discount player that had top you know three two wide receiver talent in this class we got another tight end Dalton Kincaid Green Bay 45th overall and we have a few we have a few skill players here Rashi Rice I'm not a big fan of this kid. I think he makes incredible plays downfield and can be like he he he's very much in that like the Mike Williams skill set. I don't think he's anywhere near as good as Mike Williams, but like where you know what you're getting from him, you're gonna get a few deep balls a game where it's like make a big ass play. More often than not, you're gonna make it. But the rest of his game, I feel like leaves a lot to be desired. Head and Hooker, 47, Washington. I could see this making a lot of sense. He's obviously coming back from the ACL tear, and he won't be back until um, he won't be back until some part into the season. He won't be the guy. It'll probably be Sam Howell for now until he flames out, and then Hooker takes over. Zay Flowers to Pittsburgh. Absolutely fucking love this spot. Uh, great landing spot. Who are we to even question anything Pittsburgh does at the wide receiver position? Because all they do is fucking hit. They're a pristine boxer. Zay Flowers, second round. He would be someone that would would blast up draft boards if he goes 49th overall to Pittsburgh. Tanner McKee, one of the few later round wide receivers that I've, or uh, quarterbacks that I've actually watched. Uh, I don't think he's anything special, but he is really, really accurate, like short and intermediate passes. So kind of an interesting landing spot. Stanford kid, really big in the pocket. Um, not a ton of upside, but could be like a game manager there. So that's, that's kind of an interesting spot for him. Nathaniel Dell, 54th overall to Chicago. I don't know much about this kid, but Ray was telling me, I mean, by the time you guys watch this, I'm sure I've already watched film but as of right now I haven't dove into Nathaniel Dell much I know Ray was like you know what do you think about him because he is 5'8 163 pounds and my thing with these smaller wide receivers is like you could be small skinny like you could be tall and skinny and I'm cool with it you could be short and like built and I'm cool with it you know like Steve Smith whatever or or Devonta Smith but if you got both of them like 5'8 163 that feels a little problematic for me right like Hollywood of course is like the one guy who kind of went out and and dispelled that, but he was also a first round pick with first round capital, like all American speed. So I think so much had to go right in order for that to go right. So I'm not like banking on that being a good thing for him. And then Devon Achain, the only other running back picked within the first two rounds. I know everybody gets so mad. They're like, Jameer Gibbs, how's Jameer Gibbs? Like this is, listen, these are things that will happen. You have to get a wide variety of drafts and analysis on different NFL drafts and mock drafts because there is a chance that two running backs go in the first two rounds. One of them is not Jameer Gibbs. Is it likely? Probably not, but is it possible? Absolutely. And this is the second mock draft we looked at where it was only Bijan and Devon Achain in the first two rounds. Devon Achain going to Philadelphia would be awesome because Miles Sanders is a free agent this offseason. They've always kind of wanted to use a committee there, so this would be a perfect spot where he fits in as a 10-12 to 12 touch guy who can break massive plays, who is literally an All-American sprinter, one of the fastest dudes to step on the college football field this year. Love that landing spot for Devon Achain behind incredible offensive line where you give this guy a hole and he is fucking out of there. So we haven't necessarily been putting you know picks together. We haven't been uh, put, putting out a draft board or anything right there like that based on this but those guys that went in the first round will be the majority of the rookie first round for the most part you have Jalen Hyatt versus Keyshawn Boutte I'm, I'm I'm curious if this situation were to happen in real life right Hyatt goes 39th to Carolina Boutte goes 40th to New Orleans who would you take first in a rookie draft I actually think I would take Boutte I think I would take Boutte there I don't know if that's a hot take or not but I feel like I, I think a lot of people are gonna be like it's Hyatt because he won the award and Everyone keeps hearing the fact that Jalen Hyatt goes to is going to be a first round pick, might be a top 15 pick. But I'm asking if it actually played out like this, where he went 39th overall, Boutte went 40th overall, where their draft capital is identical. And depending on the landing spot, right? like if New Orleans gets Derek Carr, Carolina drafted, uh, who they draft? Anthony Richardson in this situation. How do you see that playing out? Rashi Rice would not be a first round pick for me. Zay Flowers would end up probably being, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about Zay Flowers that he's this year's Sky Moore. 
We're like, you know, 5'10", 172. It's like, ah, he's undersized. He's a great route runner. He's explosive. He gets open over the middle. I like Zay Flowers far more than I liked Sky Moore last year. Um, but, you know, we do have some... We do have some trauma from from that. But Zay Flowers, if he goes to Pittsburgh second round, would likely be flirting with that top 12 of uh, the rookie draft. Honestly, because th this class is not overwhelmingly good. Like, there are obviously some – anytime you got four quarterbacks going in the top top 10, like, those premium picks in a super flex rookie draft are going to be extremely valuable and extremely expensive. And then you have the B. John Robinson. You have good receivers at the top. But, like, I don't know. After the first seven or eight picks, there's not there's not a ton of, like, overwhelmingly great prospects just from, like, what we know right now statistically and their draft capital and things like that. So we will see drafts where if Zay Flowers goes 49th overall to Pittsburgh, he creeps into the first round for sure. I think Devon A-Chain, if he goes here as he's the only other running back in the top two rounds and goes to Philadelphia, people will be taking him in the back of the first round. Based on all these landing spots so far, I think there's a case to be made that that would be a good pick at the 112 or the 201. But let's move on to round three, see what they got in store for us. First skill player off the board is, holy shit, Darnell Washington, tight end to Miami, Parker Washington to Indianapolis, 79th overall. There you go, Jameer Gibbs to Detroit, 81st overall. So you're talking about midway through the third round, the third running back off the board. Uh, this feels, I guess, like a DeAndre Swift replacement, right? They're kind of similar players where they – excel as being athletes Gibbs is better in the passing game I think I think they're probably similar players in terms of running style and talent level running I think I might give the edge to DeAndre Swift there but Swift will be a free agent at the following of 2023 Jamal Williams is a free agent right now but I would be surprised if they don't resign this kid I don't know why I call Jamal Williams a kid if they don't resign this grown-ass man that could whoop my fucking ass if he wanted to uh to a contract so that's an interesting landing spot I don't I don't per se love it, uh, but it's likely a swift replacement. So yeah, Jameer Gibbs, third round running back. He'll be an he'll end up being likely uh, an early early second round rookie pick if this draft capital plays out. Cedric Tillman, I like a lot. Uh, don't love the landing spot right now. We don't know what's going on with the quarterback. So that's uh, I don't know if I love that, but I do like Cedric Tillman as the player. He kind of reminds me of like a discount. Kayshawn Boutte. A.T. Perry goes to Jacksonville, 88th overall. I admittedly have not watched film on him yet either. We've got a couple tight ends. Cameron Latou to Cincinnati. Xavier Hutchinson, another guy that I have to look at, but he will immediately be behind Devonta Smith, A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard, and if they draft Jameer Gibbs, you know, there's a lot of players in the pecking order that Xavier Hutchinson will not be jumping over. Marvin Mims going to Cleveland. That's interesting because I think DPJ is a free agent either this year or next year, and Deshaun Watson is obviously there for the long term, and behind Amari Cooper, they really don't have anything there. So Marvin Mims, 5'11", 177, are they just trying to redo, uh, who is the shitty white slot wide receiver that's fast as hell that they draft like two? Anthony Schwartz. He was always terrible. People love them for no reason. Rakeem Jarrett to San Francisco at the end of the third round, pick 101. So honestly, not a lot of great like fantasy relevant picks in this third round outside of Jameer Gibbs going to Detroit. I need to watch more Parker Washington to know about my feelings because that, that would be a good landing spot. I don't know if Alec Pierce really did enough this year to be like, yeah, he's for sure the wide receiver two going forward. I think Michael Pittman is obviously the one there, but uh, he's also a free agent after this year. So we'll see you know how things turn out there. We also have to figure out the quarterback situation. Um, they did take Bryce Young in this mock draft, so it would be Bryce Young paired up with Parker Washington here. Outside of that, yeah, disappointing third round because once you get into fourth round, it's like you're not really that confident on picking guys early in your rookie drafts. Like last year, I think the only dude... We were really, really, really excited about Damian Pierce going to Houston as a fourth round pick. And here we go. Second pick of the fourth round. Houston takes Zach Charbonnet. That is an outrageous pick. I get it. Fourth round. Cool. Good running back. But you hit on Damian Pierce. Let that motherfucker cook. Let Pierce cook. Get someone else who can like compliment him as a passing down back. Draft Kenny McIntosh in the fourth or fifth round. This is crazy. This is outrageous. But again, like Zach Charbonnet, even if you like him as a talent, he's still a fourth round pick that has to now compete with a dude in Damian Pierce that just had a really, really successful rookie NFL season. So this is this a nauseating pick. I'm sick to my stomach just thinking about this bullshit right here. Zach Charbonnet, 103rd overall pick, early fourth round, early day three, terrible draft capital, but similar to Damian Pierce. We loved Damian Pierce coming out last year. We were even telling people he, he was the RB3. Even as a fourth round pick, he was the RB3 in the draft class last year for us in our rankings. Zach Charbonnet with fourth round capital will not go that high for us, especially now that he's competing with Damian Pierce. Will we still take him? Yes, but like 
uh, what what goes on in that situation now? It is a new coaching staff, so maybe you know they don't have any allegiance to Damian Pierce. But I don't know how you could take this over and then be like, yeah, Damian Pierce was as good as he was last year. And I, they probably want a committee because Damian Pierce obviously slowed down at the end of the year last year. He was less efficient down the stretch, and maybe that's because he didn't get a lot of touches in in uh, in college at Florida. Like that was one of the red flags. That was one of the very few red flags we have for Damian Pierce is that never saw him handle a workhorse load. And if you've never done it at college, it's way harder to do at the NFL level. And he slowed down, whether by injury or slowing down second half of the year. Those are the two concerns when you never do it in college. And that was what we had for Damian Pierce. So maybe they just form a committee of two really good running backs. That would be cool, but not cool for fantasy. So you hate to see that. Also, by the way, if you can't tell by my reactions here, I have not looked past. I When we started the video, I had not looked past the first round of this draft, so I had no idea where people were getting picked after the first round. Jaron Hall going to New Orleans. Jaden Reed goes to New England in the fourth round. Ronnie Bell to Kansas City. Chase Brown to Cleveland. Kareem Hunt is likely out of there, so if you're a Chase Brown fan, this is possibly a good landing spot for him, but Nick Chubb will probably be there for the foreseeable future. Tajay Spears. Now, this one is interesting. This one's really interesting. He's getting a lot of hype right now. 5'10", 205, so like decent size. Uh, people have been going crazy about him, and people will go crazy the fact that he lands in Buffalo because Devin Singletary's a free agent. Zach Moss, he's not even on the fucking team anymore, so I don't know why I'm bringing him up. Uh, they did draft James Cook, obviously, last year in the second round, but James Cook is not built to be a workhorse there. I don't even know if they really plan on using him to a heavy degree at all. I think he obviously gets more of a workload next year with these other running backs out of the way. But Tajay Spear going there, uh, Tajay Spears going there really mixes things up. A lot of people really like this kid. And I think this is this is a guy that I would be interested in here. Fourth round, not great draft capital, obviously, but great landing spot in a place where there's going to be a lot of opportunity. So Tajay Spears, go do yourself a favor, watch uh, some tape from him at Tulane. Zach Evans to Cincinnati. Eh, Noah loves Zach Evans, but this spot would not be ideal because I feel like his skill set is just a little bit like Joe Mixon's, to be honest with you. I think Joe Mixon's a better runner. Uh, but this would kind of make him redundant in a sense. He would probably be, you know, a breather back there. And so once we get into the fifth round, things are just ugly here. You're getting guys like Jalen Marino, Cropper. I fucking feels like a fake name. Max Dugan to the Falcons. Stop. Stop. What are we doing? Trey Palmer to Detroit. Eric Gray. I fucking love Eric Gray. I love Eric Gray. Going to Tampa Bay. Fournette. He's got to be on his last little ankles that he's got going on over those piano legs. But Rashad White probably becomes the guy. I still think there's opportunity to be had. Sean Tucker to San Francisco, actually, I feel like send a lot of people up in fucking frenzy. Sean Tucker is wildly explosive. Um, I could see him playing a little bit of like a Raheem Mostert. Actually, is Elijah Mitchell still there? I think Elijah Mitchell is still there. Let me check this. Elijah Mitchell will be a free agent after next year. So Sean Tucker can come in and take the Elijah Mitchell role where you are okay in between the tackles, pretty good in between the tackles, extremely explosive. So if you get on there, you get 10 carries, you're probably ripping off like a 20-yard run on one of them. I think that's a decent replacement for Mitchell, but obviously C-Mac's the guy there for the long term, so we're not going to go crazy with it. Michael Wilson, I've seen a good amount of hype around him being a really good route runner, so I'm kind of intrigued by this landing spot with Minnesota because they need someone behind. He could be like an Adam Thielen replacement. Evan Hull to Dallas. I know uh, Noah loves Evan Hull. I haven't watched any of his game film yet. Uh, so Dallas could be interesting because Zeke, I don't know, they're going to have to restructure his contract. Tony Pollard's a free agent. Maybe they tag him. Um, that would be something that would have my eyes open. But once we get down here, yeah, it's all a bunch of bullshit. Terrible players going to terrible spots. Kenny McIntosh, damn, you hate to see that. Going to the LA Ramersons. Cam Akers free agent next year. Uh, that's some open opportunity there. I, I don't hate that landing spot for him, actually. He's that, That's a spot like fifth, sixth round Kenny McIntosh going to the Rams would be someone I'd spend, you know, a, a mid third round pick on in rookie drafts. Bumper pool. How is that a name? How is that a name? I swear, I feel like some of these parents have the script to their kids' lives. They'll be like, all right, your kid's going to get, he's born, someone comes down and is like, here's a script, like your kid's going to be an NFL player. And then they name their play. They name their kid based on that information. Bumper Pool, Jake Bobo, Jarek Bernard Converse. That's so fucking strong. Mike Jones, valid as hell. Keandre Coburn is pretty strong too. All right, let's bring a bike to the big screen. Yeah, sorry that we didn't get the mock draft out for you with another person, but by next week we will bike to our regularly scheduled programs. I hope you enjoy this type of video. Let me know uh, if this is something that you actually want to see me do more often because I don't mind. I actually, it's crazy. I don't really love doing mock drafts and breaking down drafts for regular fantasy football. 
Like I do it because you guys love to see it, but it gets a little bit redundant for me. For for some reason, I cannot fucking get enough of like rookie mock drafts. It's crazy. And if y'all feel the same way, then I'll keep doing them because I actually really, really enjoy doing these shits. But that mock draft will be linked down below if you want to go check it out. While you're down there, drop a comment. I, was, I still want to know the answer to the Boutte versus Jalen Hyatt question based on this draft capital. And hit the button that looks like this. Give us a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will see y'all tomorrow for Don't Say the Cars Topless. We say Tatas is out. Our expose piece every Tuesday. I love y'all. Goodbye.